Hey, what's up everyone? We're back with another tutorial in Cubase. If you didn't think that I had those harmonies locked in at the beginning of the video, I was just trying to go fast and look cool. And from my experience, there is nothing cooler than a grown man singing in falsetto. But I did this today because I just saw on Netflix the Wet Hot American Summer 10 years later, and there's a scene where Kristen Wiig does a little voice thing with a tape recorder and it cracked me up. So I wanted to do something like that in this week's video, but I'm gonna use it as a means to talk to you all about recording modes in Cubase. So let's jump into Cubase and I'll show you what recording modes are and what I'm talking about. So uh, for those of you who do not have Cubase Pro 9, I will do you the honor of pulling up the transport panel. This is one of my favorite features of Cubase Pro 9. They've put the transport panel at the bottom and it seems like a simple thing, but I like it. I don't, I never really liked having this floating window. I didn't know where to put it, but uh, you can still get the floating window in Cubase Pro 9 by hitting F2, just like the old days. Uh, with that being said, let's jump into recording modes. They exist here. Punch in, punch out, and re-record. I always have it on punch in, punch out. That's the way that I think. It's the way that I've always done recording. Clicking record again during a recording stops the current recording. And then there's re-record. So clicking recording it again cleans up the recording and starts the recording. I don't like these methods because it takes away previous takes and you have to go into the pool and find them. And with hard drive space the way it is these days, I feel like it's good to save everything. And that'll be a common theme when looking at these recording modes. Uh, but this is an interesting one. You can start recording at the left locator. So if you're trying to record a passage, uh, you don't have to start recording at the cursor. Let's say you're trying to nail a guitar solo or a piano solo or something like that. You can just stop and hit record and it will set you back to the left locator if you have the left locator set to where you want the part to set start. So that's an interesting thing to know. Let's move on to the audio recording mode. You have keep history, which is what I always have it set to. It creates new audio events for any recording or cycle. Then you have cycle history and replace, which removes existing audio in the record range, but creates new audio events for each cycle and cycle record. That one's okay too. And then there's replace, which removes any previous audio in the record range. Now I like to have everything in the project. I like to keep everything. Uh, like I said before, hard drive space isn't really at a premium, especially for audio. It doesn't take up that much space. And uh, so, I say just keep everything, but if you want to do it a different way, you can. And then finally, we get to the MIDI record modes, which would have been helpful. So if we look at this uh, loop thing I just did, when I recorded the plucks here, I obviously screwed this up. This was supposed to be here. And I could have just let it cycle one more time through and had it keep the last keep last, but I didn't. I uh, I had it mixed because I wanted all the notes to mix when I did the drums so I could do the bass drum and then the snare and the hi-hats. Uh, but I could have quickly come in and switched the mode before I started recording this little piano line. But again, I didn't do that because I was trying to look cool. And there's nothing cooler than a man playing piano over himself singing falsetto. So uh, you can look at all the different types of options you have. I like to create new parts for each recording, or I like to merge, depending on what I'm trying to do. Uh, not create a new MIDI part, but merge it all, and that's nice as well. And replace I never use. I don't like to get rid of old stuff. So I'm either using new parts or I'm using merge. And then these, they're pretty self-explanatory. You can keep the last, you can overwrite, or you can mix everything together. And then you can do stacked, in which new parts are created, but only the last one is played back, and mix stacked, in which there's no mute. So that is a brief rundown of recording modes in Cubase. I hope that it's been helpful. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and leave a comment if you'd like to see me cover something in the future. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.